the uh, the lattice exporter and the terrain exporter are actually very similar and for this video although it's about lattices I'm going to use a terrain to demonstrate because it's just half the size of the uh, image map we're outputting so I'm going to hold the control key down and create a terrain I'm going to get rid of this infinite plane select the terrain edit it and I'm just going to use new to flatten the terrain so we've got no geometry output to concern ourselves with they're only concentrating on the material so into the material lab I'm going to put a blob in the diffuse channel there and then holding the shift key down on the name go to the basic library and bring out these beveled tiles. Now these beveled tiles are uh, handy because they've got the three channel output colour, alpha and bump. And if we just quickly turn off colour and alpha you can see that the bump channel is showing this sort of grey grid with these white areas and, and dark areas and that's not really actually a bump map. A bump map should look like a height map and this is some actual impression of what you might get out of the bump channel. Uh, if I check out of here, even though we've got colour and alpha turned off, we've now got outputs in these. And this is actually the bump channel output we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that in bump, a blob. Oh, and you'll see that this coloured channel's turned up now by putting a bump, uh, a blob in bump, even though we've got no bump output. And we'll, we'll have a look at this uh, when I first saw this, I got, I got quite excited because I thought, ah, that looks like a normal map. And you'll see why if you've not seen a normal map when we start uh, analysing what we've got on the output here. But first of all, I'm just going to get some bump out of this channel. So if I turn everything off out except the bump, uh, oh, before I do that, I'll just put it in diffuse grey and, and you'll get an impression of what we've got here. So if I move my camera over and down onto this surface, right, and get the material working, so I've got bump output set up so and the preview um, actual selection obviously because we've got it parametric scaled we're not getting any output so I'm going to have to switch this to something where we get an output okay world space will do the frequency of that doesn't look too bad I'm going to reduce it though just to simplify matters for us so there we go that's uh, created our pattern we're getting a preview now and then I'll just give that a quick render so if I choose the overhead view, you can see I'm facing what I call north. And if I look at the rollerball, that means the sun is now on my right, which tells us that these are depressions. And so this is a raised grid. And this does correspond with what we've got in the material lab, because white is high and, and the dark is low. And, and everything in between is a sort of a gradient. And this is what's interpreted with the bump map. So I would expect then, if I export this, I should get that grid. We'll do that now. So File, Export Object, I'll select uh, Wavefront Object Mesh Export, and uh, it's Terrain 1, I'll just save that. And this is where you get the size of your output uh, map. I'm going to leave it at the default, but if you want to turn it up higher, that's handy for when you're doing things. And this sets the grid resolution, which I'm not going to mess with. That's just the default resolution, but you can reduce the size of it or increase the size of it. But you have to be a bit careful when you go up to this end because it can crash. Oh, and you can also see we've got a report here that tells us what image maps we're outputting, and you can turn them on or off there. I can't turn these other ones off because that information wasn't there to start with, but it will give us a bump map. So I'll just do that. It's saved it. And then if I use um, PaintShop Pro here and drop that in, you can see that's what it says is our bump map. But that's not our bump map. That's an impression of what a bump map will give you. And it's not even how it's lit in our Bryce scene because I deliberately meant lit that side. I've got um, Crazy Bump here, which is a, a good bit of software that will help us analyze this. And what you can do is you can open different types of file. So the height map would be what we'd want as our bump map. And if I load that in to Crazy Bump, and I'll just check my options here, I've got the diffuse texture turned off. If that was turned on, then that would be including what we've just loaded in as an image channel. But I'll just turn that off and move this preview across so you can see. That's the normals generated from this map. That's the displacement map. This is the result we've got. And that, uh, I hope you can see, doesn't look right. There's a few other maps it can generate here. So I'll go back to Bryce, and now we're going to trick Bryce into outputting a map that we can use as a bump map. So go into Material Lab. Now, this is an alpha channel. If 
I use this alpha channel, say, here, on the diffuse output, and then get rid of the, the bump. So I'll just set that to zero. OK, let's check out of that. Go back in. Everything's fine. We've still got this output, but you can see we've got the grid now. I'm not using the diffuse level. I'm not worried about that. This is the level of diffuse output. This is the color. So this is an alpha output. So if we check out of that and then go file and then export object and we'll call this uh, two so we can keep the, them separate. Just use the default settings. So you've got diffusion there, not diffusion color. So I'll check out of that now and then go into PaintShop Pro and we'll bring this one in and that is actually going to be a better output to generate bump from. So if I go into crazy bump now and open height map from file, open that height map, what I hope you can see here is that that's actually looking like what we should have. And the other thing that I'll point out uh, in passing is that Crazy Bump supports parallax mapping, something that I've uh, really wanted for Bryce for a long time. And the effect of that, you see that there's occlusion here occurring. So if I can zoom it back, the shallower angle we're looking on, we're seeing less and less of the edges. So we're actually getting the effect of simulated geometry, but it can work really fast with parallax mapping, unlike um, displacement, genuine geometry displacement is quite... Uh, um, punishing as far as processing is concerned. And you'll certainly know that if you've ever tried to do it in Bryce. So if on the options here I can turn the parallax off and you can see what an effect it has. It really brings out 3D-ness in the material there. But it, it's flat on the surface. It's just an illusion of occlusion that's included on the geometry surface. Digression. Okay. What you might also have noticed, if you were, uh, if you were not really listening to me there and I can understand why you wouldn't, is that on the right hand side here we've got a normal map and I'll draw your attention to, in the material lab here, this output, which looks quite similar. So it's almost as if Bryce is aware of normal maps, but we can test this because I can trick Bryce into giving us this output. So if I put a blob in there and then I switch the diffusion off, see it's just dark. No, go and diffuse, it's just grey. But if I put a blob in bump, even though I'm not generating any bump output, I can trick this map out of Bryce. So I can give diffuse output there. That's just a level. I've got a diffuse blob in there and a blob in bump, and that will trick this map out of Bryce. Now, if we go into any of the other labs and come back out of them, it will forget that setting. So this isn't a part of Bryce. This is just a trick to get this out. So I'll check out of here. And you'll see it's in the render at the moment. But if I was to go into the Skylab and come out, it will break that. So to get these maps out isn't that easy. You have to be quite disciplined in knowing what you're doing. Back into the Material Lab and back out again, then you can get this map out. So we'll export this one again. File and Export Object. I'll call this 3, just to keep it separate from the other ones. Leave it at its default setting. You'll see now we've got bump output, even though that bump channel is at zero and we've got the diffuse color and it's the diffuse color we're interested in getting this map out so I've now got that I'll show you what that looks like in PaintShop Pro so that's yet another map we've pulled out of Bryce and then I'm going to load this in to Crazy Bump and I'm going to load it in as a normal map we'll see how far off it is from behaving like a normal map so there we go we'll open that and that's what it's generated so this is a displacement map which is essentially a height map and the first thing you'll notice is that the it's treated it as inverse because if you remember from last time high high points white low points dark so you'd need to invert the normal map or response uh, but in, in crazy we've got to, we've got some things here where we can we can switch things over if I can find the controls I know there's a way of inverting it that's what it's loaded in anyway as its normal map there's also different ways that you can uh, control whether or not the, uh, the the map loads in and how it's interpreted. If I can just remember where it was hidden, that'd be great. Um, load settings. No, I need to... Uh, preferences, right, okay. So we've got normal map interpretation here. So if I invert that and change that, that should now flip our response. So it looks like, for a start, the, the normal map as far as the the standard is concerned is inverted.
but it's also slightly distorted but it's not too bad it's not too bad you might actually get away providing your whatever software you're importing into and of course Bryce doesn't support normal maps so that's not really a problem you might get away by inverting the response and using this as a normal map in whatever you're importing these objects into when you've done it so I know that's a little bit complicated I just wanted to point that out in this particular part because it sort of relates to what we're doing but essentially this uh, video has been about getting a bump map out of Bryce and I will also point out that the DAS Studio bridge doesn't send bump maps over correctly either. In either direction it doesn't seem to work very well. Things that get sent from uh, DAS Studio don't seem to have the correct bump maps on them and likewise things go back. But if you can get at the normal maps and you've got the program to do it, and I'm sure there are other programs available as well, uh, then you can convert the normal maps into displacement maps which are what you need for a bump map and then you could modify the materials. Obviously it'd be nice if the DAS Studio bridge did that for you but you know we can't control that. It's, uh, it's outside the scope of what we can do so essentially we're just trying to find workarounds at this point. So there you go a little bit of complicated topic there but that's the end of this video and in the next video what I plan to do is a practical application of what we've looked at here in terms of exporting the maps. I know we've only looked at the bump channel but You've seen on the export you've got other channels and essentially what we've done here is the process. You need to identify what you need out of it and 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 reject the, the some of the things that uh, the exporter sends out that aren't appropriate for whatever you happen to be importing your objects and maps into that you've uh, that you've chosen. In the, in this case the next video we'll use Octane. Okay then, that's the end of the tutorial.